Welcome to a Prescribing Lifestyle, the podcast that's all about empowering you to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm your host, Dr. Avi Charlton, and each week we'll dive into the latest research, practical tips, and inspiring stories to help you optimize your well-being. From nutrition and fitness to mental health and mindfulness, we'll explore every aspect of lifestyle medicine giving you the tools you need to make informed decisions and take control of your health. Whether you're looking into preventing disease, managing chronic conditions, or simply elevate your quality of life, Prescribing Lifestyle is here to guide you on your journey to wellness. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to embark on this transformative adventure towards a healthier, happier you. Let's dive in. Hello, welcome to another episode of Prescribing Lifestyle. It's your host, Dr. Avi Charlton. Today, I'm going to talk about my two-week journey on a continuous ketone meter and a continuous glucose meter. I got contacted by a company called CBO who produces continuous ketone meter. They contacted me and see if I was interested to trial their product as well as be an affiliate and help them promote their product. So I was quite happy to receive this product as a freebie. They sent it to me in the mail. It came about a couple of weeks after I responded to this email. And um, I told my dear friend Gillian Harvey, who's a nutritionist, she happened to be happy to share with me, not actually share, but give it away, her Freestyle Libre Continuous Glucose Meter. And she wanted me to do this 14-day, two-week experiment on wearing both a CKM, continuous ketone meter, as well as a continuous glucose meter, CGM. So I had a CKM and a CGM, one on each arm. I put it on two weeks ago on a Saturday, and I took the CKM off yesterday. What happened was the CGM had fallen out two days before it was supposed to. I must admit, I it was caught in the car door when I was trying to close the door. I actually put a dressing on, a clear dressing on the CGM, which only lasted a week, and then I took it off, and then I put a new dressing on, and that only lasted a day. And then I had two or three days without any dressing on the CGM, and it happened to get caught in my car door. And uh, I try to stick it back on, but I think the needle in the sensor is out already. So the CGM experiment was just short of about 12 days, not 14 days. Whereas the CKM, the CBO continuous ketone meter, stayed on for 14 days. It was actually very well stuck on my arm. I popped it on with the applicator. So it comes with an applicator, and the sensor is attached to the applicator, very, very similar to the CGM. And all I had to do was pop into my arm, and there's a tiny needle that goes in from the sensor to my skin, and it takes in the interstitial fluid into the sensor, and the sensor talks to the app, and I've got an iPhone. So my iPhone app called the CBO I think it's called CBO. Let me have a look. Yeah, CBO CKM is my app on the phone. Talk to the sensor. So it continuously gives me any number that I like. Not in, not not any number that I like, but the giving me continuous feedback on my ketone levels taken from the fluid, from my interstitial fluid on my upper arm. So I wore it for two weeks and it also comes with a little patch which is a little dressing that covers it and it sort of protects the sensor from I guess knocking of the car door or knocking of anything. Wearing both of these sensors didn't really bother me. I just went about my usual day. I run three times a week and I exercise lifting weights two times a week and I would shower. I had my sauna so I went into my sauna and um, using both of these sensors didn't really annoy me. I slept and I sleep on my side sometimes. It didn't really annoy this 
I mean, the censor didn't annoy me and I didn't annoy the censor. There was once, it was a very cold morning. I went outside for a run. The CGM had fault and couldn't detect my glucose level for a short period of time. Whereas the CKM had no problem. And um, when I was in a sauna one day, the CGM said it was too hot, but the CKM had no problem. So there you go. There's a bit of a comparison with the CGM and the CKM. So I'm just going to tell you this product, what it's for and who it's designed for. This continuous ketone meter is a device that you wear on the arm. You wear it for 14 days. And it's great for those people who are on a ketogenic diet or those who call themselves biohackers, which maybe I am. So if you want to know if you're producing ketones, then it might be worthwhile wearing a CKM. As I said in my previous episode of my podcast, The Magic of Ketones, I also have a finger prick ketone meter, finger pricking my blood um, ketone levels, which is a freestyle Optium Neo that I prick my fingers. But um, having a continuous ketone meter is absolutely great that I don't have to prick my fingers to get a number. And I can just open the app and see what number it is. And the purpose of this review is just to let you know my experience, and it's all personal opinions, how easy it is to use, the benefits, the drawbacks, and the overall value that I have found. So, again, the continuous ketone meter measures interstitial fluid. The finger prick ketone measures blood. Um, my One of my uh, contacts, Megan Allen, who's a recipe writer in Australia, she also took up this experiment and she ordered herself a CKM, same device as I did. And she pricked her finger and noticed some discrepancy on the finger prick ketone compared to the interstitial ketone. So one day I did prick my finger and my ketone, finger prick ketone meter, told me my ketone was 0.8, whereas my CKM told me it was 0.5. So it can have a bit of discrepancy. I don't know which one is right. And I'm just telling you, this can be a discrepancy on these two devices. I suppose if you have a continuous glucose meter compared to a finger prick glucose meter, there can be a little bit of discrepancy as well because the the glucose and the ketones in the interstitial fluid can be a bit different from the blood in the blood reading. So the the cost of the of the continuous ketone meter you can actually order it from the CBO website and I'll put in my link on this podcast on of an affiliate code if you order it I will get a little bit of this um money back 10% actually and if you like to support my work you can order it from this link that I'm going to pop in the show notes However, if you do this, <laughs> it's actually a bit more expensive <laughs> to my disappointment because they're actually running a 20% sale on the CBO website. So you can go onto the CBO website and order it for 20%. It turns out to be about 60 euro dollars on the website and I worked out to be about 114 dollars Australian dollars. Or you can also order it from um the Amazon website, which costed about $118 and looks like it'll deliver the next day. I didn't order from Amazon, even though I love ordering from Amazon. <laughs> so the features of this continuous ketone meter is mainly to measure blood ketones. About a week into my experiment, I noticed some changes in the app. The app actually gives you a an option of of uh, entering a what do you call it a um, a uh, an activity. So you can you can tell the app that you had exercise or you had a meal or you had some thing going on. So, but I used a little bit, then I 
didn't because it was um I didn't have any time to put in what incidents I did and it I didn't really find that useful because because I was mainly looking at the app over uh at a, as a live number and see what my ketone is doing um and I actually found this experience of using the CKM really really positive and I quite like this sensor if it wasn't so expensive I would be really liking this experience the process was really intuitive. It didn't re really need much learning. As I said um, in my previous episode, we really aim to have keto numbers to be 0.5 and over. And the app actually tells you that if you're below 0.5, you're not really in ketosis. And if you're over 0.5, you are in nutritional ketosis. The app will tell you that. It was really comfortable to wear and um, it talks to my phone. It was easy to be calibrated. It did take about an hour to start working after I put it on. And the data on the app was really easy to read. You can see on my social media that the app will show you what your current ketone is and your ketone numbers over the last few hours or last 12 hours or last 24 hours and you can choose the view you like to do and you'll see a bit of a curve. What I have found that in my ketone level overnight I don't get much ketones. I was actually quite surprised in that because I thought I'll be producing ketones even overnight but this was really interesting to learn that when we're sleeping we our body actually do neo gluconeogenesis. Our body produces glucose. And I actually asked um, a few low-carb doctors. I asked Dr. Caroline Harris, who was actually doing the same experiment, wearing a CKM as well, and she found the same thing. And then I asked around, Dr. Louise Phillips explained that overnight our body actually makes glucose called gluconeogenesis. So overnight, most of the time, my ketone was 0.1. When I wake up, I don't have much ketones, and it's 0 0.2, 0 0.3, not very high at all. I usually do an exercise first thing in the morning, and um, doing exercise sometimes makes the ketones even lower. And I've learned that when you exercise, you actually use up the ketones. So there's not much ketones going around because your body actually will use up the ketones. And um, my ketones gradually climb up, maybe just before lunchtime. Sometimes if I do a run, if I go running first thing in the morning, the ketones will climb up a bit faster. So by 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, my, my ketones will climb up to 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and up to 1, 1 1.2 was the highest, I think. And then after lunch, it doesn't die down straight away quickly. And then maybe after half an hour or an hour, eventually the ketones will drop, and then it will drop till 0 0.2, 0 0.3 after lunch. I think my meals might be high in protein rather than high in fat. And um, that makes the ketone drop. And then late in the afternoon, if I don't snack, quite often my ketones will climb up again at about 4 or 5 o'clock from 0 0.5, 0 0.8, even up to 1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3 after lunch. And then after, so after dinner, the ketones will drop again and usually it's quite negligible until I go to sleep. So that is my general trend of my keto numbers over the two-week period. I have found that if I go running, the keto numbers generally climb up faster after my morning run. And when I go into exercise, the keto numbers will go down. Sometimes going into my sauna will help it go up, but sometimes it does make it go down. My friend Gillian Harvey, nutritionist, she gave me some ketone tablets, actually not tablets, capsules called ketone esters. And those ketones, when I took it early in the morning when I didn't have ketones, it did spike my ketones up a bit. And 
but uh, quickly it dropped from 0.8 to 0.4, 0.5. It did a did give me a little spike. So, what is the usefulness of having a continuous ketone meter? I think it'll be useful for those who really want to know if they're in ketosis. So, those who are doing a ketogenic diet, and those people who want to lose weight using a ketogenic diet, those people who are aiming to manage their mental health using ketogenic diet, and some people manage their cancer with a metabolic approach using a ketogenic diet, therapeutic carbohydrate restriction. Those people will be really helpful to use a key, a continuous ketone meter to get an idea of what their body at. And sometimes this can be good to keep yourself accountable because if I see my ketones, sometimes you really don't want to snack because I want to keep those ketones up. And um, continuous glucose meter can be used with uh, with uh, this in mind as well as an accountability buddy that you are ca- keeping yourself accountable. This continuous ketone meter doesn't really have the feature of showing the data to your health provider, whereas the continuous glucose meter quite often have this ability that it connects to uh, your health provider. So the Freestyle Libre can do that. And I can also see the Vively app, which is a new app that I've checked out. I they, Again, they offered me a discount for using it, but then my, my glucose level has been a flat line. So I'm not really sure of my own personal benefits of wearing another CGM because I'm getting a flat line anyway. I, my glucose do spike when I exercise. So there you have it, my review of having a continuous ketone meter. Limitations, I think it's a cost because it does cost 120 for two weeks. For some people, this can be out of reach. And the limitations is you can't really have the app talking to your health provider. And um, But then the benefit is you can use it as accountability buddy. You can see your ketone how your body is producing ketones in real life. And you can see um, uh, you can see what numbers you are. Just bear in mind that some people are actually fat adapted and having those ketones, your body actually uses those ketones as well. So it, um, it might mean that uh, it's, uh, your body is using the ketones if your ketone is low. And um, so if you're interested in having this CBO continuous ketone meter, you can check it out on my link, which I'll link on my show notes. And you can click and check out this product. Again, they have offered me an affiliate link that if you order it through my link, then I will get 10% if you're keen to support me. But they are also having a 20% off. And you can also order it from Amazon website. And I think it is a fantastic device who would uh, like to use it. But the drawback is having high ketones doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be losing weight because you can ingest more carbs, you can eat more, not sorry, more not carbs, but fat. You can eat more fat, you can drink MCT oil, you can have ketone esters. Doesn't mean that your body will... Sorry, if you eat those ketones, if you have MCT oil, your blood ketone level will go up. Doesn't mean that your body will ban, burn the fat that you have lost, that you want to lose. And I actually weighed myself this morning, two weeks after the initial weigh in, and I have not lost any weight. I'm probably about two kilograms higher than I would like to be. So I would like to lose two kilograms, but I have found it very difficult to lose two kilograms myself. So if you are interested in this CBO ketometer, it might be a good thing. It might not, it may or may not help you lose weight. It will give you a clear idea on what your body is doing. It will tell you if you're in ketosis or not at the right time, at that particular time. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode of Prescribing Lifestyle and for further episodes, keep track of my Prescribing Lifestyle podcast and I will bring to you further insights into having a healthy lifestyle. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Prescribing Lifestyle Podcast. Before we wrap up, I have an exciting news to share. I have a new ebook called Low Carb Made Easy. It's now available. This guide is perfect for anyone looking to dive into the low carb lifestyle. Inside, you'll find the basic theory behind low carb eating, a detailed fruit list, practical meal plan, and a variety of delicious recipes. It's designed to make a journey to better health easier, simpler, and enjoyable. For those who prefer a hard copy, head over to my website and register your interest using the link provided. My website is www.mlcclinic.com.au. Head to online store. Remember the information shared in this podcast. It's for educational purposes only and not proper medical advice. Always consult your medical professional before making any changes to your lifestyle and diet. Or you can come and see me in Melbourne Low Carb Clinic. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review and stay connected with us on social media. Your feedback will help us improve and reach more listeners. Lastly, if you found this episode helpful, please share it with your friends and family. Together, we can make a positive impact to our health and our communities. Thanks again for listening and as always, stay healthy and happy. Until next time.